Monster Hunter World's weapon progression paths are much simpler than previous games, but there are some standout paths you may or may not notice. This guide series is going to focus on weapon upgrades to take you through low rank and high rank as painlessly as possible for each weapon type. Obviously, since we're talking about flying through the early game, we don't want to sit and farm monsters for days. You will need to farm a bit following these paths, but hopefully not too much. The majority of the parts also come from easier monsters, which should make progress fairly painless. You need to hoard everything you come across. If you see a mining node, hit it. Bone pile, take everything. The last thing you want to do is have to go randomly find some bones or minerals for an upgrade. Everything you gather will be useful, and you'll save time by gathering as much as you can along the way. Any questionable materials, I will be providing where to get them as we talk about the upgrades themselves. A last word of advice, always capture monsters if you can. They yield better rewards than killing or carving. To capture a monster, damage it until you see a skull by their icon on the minimap. Now you have to lay a pitfall or shock trap and lure them into it. Then get close and throw two tranquilizers which will knock out the monster and end the battle. You can wait until monsters return to their nest to sleep and drop a free trap on them. Capturing is always recommended, especially for harder fights, since even when a monster is in critical health, it will still put up a rather lengthy battle before going down. There is really only one reasonable weapon path for longswords that stays reasonable for the entirety of low rank and all the way to high rank, and that's Toby Kadachi's Thunder Sword. The short answer to this guide is make the Toby Kadachi Longsword and upgrade it as soon as possible and you'll steamroll most of the game. Now for the long answer. The Iron Katana you start the game with will be acceptable for the first few missions. Try and hit a mining node for the two iron ore required to upgrade it to an Iron Katana 2 after your first real quest. You will use this for the first set of large monsters, including Great Jagras and the Kulu Yaku. If you're lucky after the first hunt with the Kulu Yaku, you'll have the required 1 Kulu Yaku Beak, 2 Kulu Yaku Hides, and 3 Kulu Yaku Scales to upgrade your Iron Katana 2 into a First Dance 1. This upgrade is technically optional as it is a dead end path, but it will be a good bridge to the Toby Kadachi Longsword. It's recommended to take this upgrade. If you didn't get the materials required and you don't want to fight Kulu Yaku multiple times, the Iron Katana 2 will be acceptable to take out our next target, which is the Puki Puki, but the First Dance 1 will be significantly easier. After the Puki Puki, you'll want to complete your mandatory assignments of hunting a broth in Wildspire Wastes. If you didn't upgrade to a First Dance 1, you can upgrade to an Iron Katana 3 by mining Earth Crystals in Wildspire Wastes. This weapon is significantly worse than the First Dance 1, so that's the recommended route. The Iron Katana 3 does lead to one of the better endgame weapons eventually, but that's miles off at this point. Now complete Sinister Shadows of the Swamp to hunt a Juratotus. The Juratotus path is pretty strong, but starts off a lot weaker. The Jura Shuttle 1's main weakness is that it has significantly less green sharpness than the First Dance 1. The Jura Shuttle 1 and First Dance 1 will be extremely comparable. First Dance 1's high sharpness is actually really useful in fights where you don't have the opportunity to sharpen often. The Jura Shuttle 1 will outperform it damage wise, but once it loses its green sharpness, fights won't be as easy. I consider this an optional upgrade, as the next sword should be the main path for the entirety of low rank. After beating Jura Totus, you'll have to fight a Toby Kadachi. Conveniently, Toby Kadachi is weak against water elemental damage, so use the Jura Shuttle 1 if you have it. After beating Toby Kadachi, make or buy Bone Shuttle 1 and upgrade it to Bone Shuttle 2. You'll only need 3 Monster Bone S for the whole path. These are extremely common and you should have many of them at this point in the game. Now upgrade your Bone Shuttle 2 to Pulsar Shuttle 1 by using 1 Toby Kadachi Claw, 3 Toby Kadachi Scales, and 2 Toby Kadachi Pelts. Our next sends are Anjanath and Zora Magdaros, both of which are weakest to water. Anjanath is still quite weak to thunder, so while the Pulsar Shuttles have less raw damage, they have 10% affinity and much longer green sharpness, so this is probably what you should use against Anjanath. After defeating Zora Magdaros, don't worry, it's a set piece and you can't really lose, you'll gain access to the Coral Highlands. You'll be forced into an expedition to explore. Use this time to gather materials to upgrade your Pulsar Shuttle. By mining in the Coral Highlands, you can get Coral Crystal. Upgrade your Pulsar Shuttle 1 into a Pulsar Shuttle 2 by using 2 Toby Kadachi Electrodes, 3 Toby Kadachi Claws, 2 Electro Sacks, and 3 Coral Crystals. Try and get the 3 Coral Crystals in your first expedition into the Coral Highlands as this will make the next fight significantly easier. Continue progressing through the main story, you'll fight a Palaumu, and then you'll descend into the Rotten Vale and take out a Radoban. Continue progressing again, and you'll have to take out a Lagania. Thankfully, our weapon is perfect against it since it's weak to thunder. After defeating Lagania, if you're lucky, you'll get two Monster Bone Plus. Otherwise, you'll have to farm any 5-star monster to get them. These include Lagania, Odogeron, Rathalos, and Diablos. All of these, conveniently, you have to fight anyway as part of standard story progression. Your final upgrade for low rank is to upgrade your Pulsar Shuttle 2 into a Pulsar Shuttle 3. 
This requires two Monster Bone Plus, two Toby Kadachi Electrodes, two Toby Kadachi Membranes, and two Warped Bones. The Warped Bones can be gathered from bone piles in the Rotten Vale. Take out any remaining monsters in low rank and you'll be able to take on Zora Magdaros a second time. After beating this set piece and killing a deceptively strong Pookie Pookie, you'll gain access to the high rank quests. Congratulations, the baby gloves are coming off. Our immediate goal in high rank is a weapon upgrade to compensate for the increased health of monsters with a long term goal of bringing our sharpness to the next level. At the start of high rank, you'll be able to free hunt Toby Kadachi in the Ancient Forest. If you can't find Toby Kadachi in Expedition Mode, check for Investigation Quests. I had to do Investigation Quests until I unlocked an optional quest to hunt Toby Kadachi. After beating him, you'll want to upgrade your Pulsar Shuttle 3 to Kadachi Fang 1 as soon as possible. It requires 3 Toby Kadachi Claw Plus, 4 Toby Kadachi Scale Plus, 3 Toby Kadachi Pelt, and 3 Dragon Vein Crystals. Dragon Vein Crystals can be found in Wildspire Wastes and Coral Highlands in High Rank. Look for red mining nodes and you'll get them there. Thankfully, the Kadachi Fang 1 actually brings us up to natural blue sharpness. It's small, but it will be extremely useful as we won't bounce as often against high rank monsters. It also gains a gem slot, which you can socket with whatever you want, or more likely, just whatever you have. You can continue progressing with the main story, but to upgrade again, you'll need two majestic horns from Diablos. Kadachi Claw 1 will be adequate to do this, but to break Diablos' horns to get the two majestic horns you need will be an experience in suffering. Hunting Diablos online here will be a great option, and it's recommended to do it. Upgrade your Kadachi Fang 1 to a Kadachi Fang 2 by using two Majestic Horns, two Toby Kadachi Electrode Plus, four Toby Kadachi Claw Plus, and three Thunder Sacks. Upgrading here will tide you over until you finally face off against Nergigante. Thankfully, he's also weak to Thunder. Nergigante is the big boy we've been building up to for pretty much the whole game. After your hunt, if you're lucky, you'll have gotten two Nergigante Talons to upgrade your Kadachi Fang 2 to a Kadachi Fang 3. After Nergigante, you'll be required to do quests in the Ancient Forests, Wildspire Wastes, and Rotten Vale until you get enough research points to get the next set of Elder Dragons. I would recommend farming Baroth in Wildspire Wastes and Radogan in Rotten Vale until you complete the research. Both of these monsters are easy to kill and will help progress the research level when you complete a hunt. Radogan can be killed in about 7 minutes with the weapons you're using and has a pretty reasonable drop rate for Wyvern Gems. I got 2 in the time it took for me to complete the Rotten Vale research. After you get the Wyvern Gem, use it and the two Nergigante Talons, four Toby Kadachi Electrode Plus, and six Toby Kadachi Claw Plus to upgrade from the Kadachi Fang 2 to the Kadachi Fang 3. Congratulations, now you have an endgame weapon that's more than capable of beating the rest of the game. This thing will trash Nergigante and Kushala Deora, but won't be as good against the remaining Elder Dragons. If you're struggling with them, you can farm Nergigante for his armor and weapon. For Teostra, you can build the Juratotus Path or Lagania Path. Lagania's final weapon will be way better, but requires Kushala Deora Claws and a gem. The Lagania Path will also be a reasonable option against Valhazak. If you want a good general purpose weapon, just build the Nergigante Longsword and call it a day. Go through the sequence of Iron Katana 1, to Iron Katana 2, to Iron Katana 3, to Iron Grace 1, to Iron Grace 2, to Iron Grace 3, to Iron Gospel 1. Then finally, the Nurgle Reaver. Eventually you can upgrade this to Extermination's Edge, but it requires Xenogevia materials. The Iron Katana path only uses ores, so it should be easy to make if you've been diligent about hitting mining nodes throughout your whole playtime. Then it's just a matter of getting the Nergigante and Xenogivia materials. Obviously, if you're feeling up to it and you want to min-max, you can build one longsword of every element for each monster. Thanks for watching. If you thought this video was helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Guides for the rest of the weapons are on the way.